we rejoin our two heroes, the Postal Dude and his beloved sidekick Champ, as they narrowly escape the nuclear destruction of their apocalyptic weekend escapades. Having braved everything the world could throw at them this past week, all seems well for the two. Yep, looks like everything worked out pretty good in the end. Eh, Champ? <laughs> Postal 2 Paradise Lost is the DLC campaign for the first person shooter Postal 2, recently released on Steam 12 years after Postal 2's initial release, and the game itself takes place 10 years after the events in the previous game. Developed by Running With Scissors, it's an incredibly offensive and enjoyable first person shooter that is unique and disgusting from start to finish, and worth playing for anyone that can take a joke in good spirit. He once again assume the role of the dude, everyone's favourite cynical psychopath, after the detonation of a nuclear device, which turns the entire area of paradise into a wasteland with different weather in each zone. One area might be raining constantly, whilst another is covered in snow, as an example. It's funny to think that we're getting a game in 2015 that runs on the Unreal 2 engine, but sure enough, here it is. Now, Paradise Lost obviously looks like complete crap. The textures are bad, character models are really low poly, animation is stiff, and there's also no music and basic sound for the weapons and other effects. But that kind of lends to the charm of it, and it truly does feel like a blast from the past, not only in terms of the visuals, but the gameplay and plot as well. Damn, he Initially, you're just trying to find your dog Champ, who's run off, but the plot soon deviates into some truly bizarre and weird scenarios, those of which I don't want to spoil. Needless to say, it's wacky stuff, and there is no sense of normalcy here whatsoever. Please, put down your weapon. I mean you no harm. You are to be mistaken, as Al-Qaeda is a peace-loving group, loving of all races and creeds. People with no sense of humor need not apply here, as this is a game that requires a very open mind. Aw, does our little pachyderm pal want to show his appreciation? The game's campaign comprises of the five days of the week during which you will have to move around town and complete objectives, like raising money for a demonic charity or installing a new violent video game in the local arcade. After you complete a certain objective, the area is usually cordoned off and you have to shoot your way out, pissing off a group or faction in the process, causing them to treat you hostile for the rest of the game. You get all manner of weapons, some standard, others not so much, and the game uses the more traditional health system, with armor pickups and healing items to help keep you on your feet. Now one thing I like about this DLC is that it takes an outright dig at certain social groups and figures, notably reddit.com, other games like Stalker and Borderlands, and finally game developers, in particular Tim Schafer, who gets ripped a new asshole in this game. I'm not even kidding, the in-game equivalent of Schaefer works for a company called PU Games, and his office is littered with donuts and an oversized butt plug hidden behind an arcade cabinet. The fact that the building is a refurbished bank and his office is the vault speaks volumes about what these developers think about him. Other missions involve milking Ebola-infested undead cows, escaping a church infested by zombies with Tourette syndromes, or escaping an animal testing laboratory with pistol-wielding monkeys that fight alongside the player. You can't say this stuff ain't original. Yeah, I'll admit it's seriously lowbrow stuff, even borderline stupid at times, but I would be lying if I didn't say this game had me frequently laughing out loud at just how absurd everything really is. Did you see what that guy just did? Good God, that is disgusting! Let's tear this meat bag a new piss hole. It's refreshing to see a game not give a shit about how people interpret it, especially in this day and age where AAA developers come under flack for something as simple as the way they dress female characters. Paradise Lost is a throwback to those older games of the late 90s and early noughties that just did whatever the hell they wanted, flipping the middle finger at so-called social constructs and standards of decency. And it's fantastic to see that return in this DLC. One of Postal 2's biggest strengths was the way that it let you move around these environments and explore to your heart's content, and that's something that still carries through to the DLC. 99% of buildings have multiple entrances and are often chock full of weapons and other important items. NPCs will react to your presence if you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, and if you cause too much fuss, the cops will often show up and start giving chase, if not just outright shoot at you. Suppose this is the fruit of the Second Amendment. There is a lot of fun again to be had with just messing around with pedestrians that you come across. You are free to murder to your heart's content. Light people on fire and then relieve yourself on their charred corpses if you really want to. Yeah, it's pretty twisted stuff, but this is a game after all, isn't it? <laughs> 
Sadly, Paradise Lost still carries over almost all of the issues from the previous game along with it. Again, the hit detection is just horrible. It's horrible. You'll notice it more when you're going for headshots, as you'll see how firing bang on someone's head at close range with a shotgun of all things often doesn't register properly. Melee weapons aren't all that bad, the bladed types are actually great at dismembering, but blunt and other ranged weapons often suffer quite a bit. The boss fights are atrocious, the end boss fight in particular at the moment is just incredibly horrible, and I don't think it's a stress to say this is one of the worst boss fights in any single FPS game I've ever played. Then there's some weird optimization issues where the frame rate often stutters like hell. This isn't something you want to worry about on what is almost a 15 year old graphics engine. I mean, I can understand these guys didn't have the biggest budget, but surely something could have been done to fix this up at least. At the end of the day, this is probably one of the most subjective games available, and whether or not you're going to want to try it yourself is going to come down to a couple of key factors. Are you a down-to-earth person that can take a joke and recognize irony if it isn't smacking you in the face? Are you a bit jaded with the current state of the video game industry and would enjoy playing a game that constantly mocks this? Can you see the humor in the notion of walking down the street killing people with a weed whacker? If you answered yes to any of that, then I'd say Paradise Lost is something worth checking out. But don't get me wrong, this is an utterly horrid game on all fronts. It looks bad, it sounds bad, and it's in bad taste. It's the shit-stained icing on the cake that was Postal 2, but because something is horrid, doesn't always mean it's not entertaining. And even with all of these faults, Paradise Lost is still one of the more interesting first-person shooters to come along in recent times. And if nothing more, guys, at least it ain't another goddamn early access first-person survival game. Oh, great. These guys again.